thank you. Hello to everyone. Um, I'm really glad to present this first project of, of virtual reality that we made uh, uh, t one year ago, uh, earlier in 2018. So, um, quickly, I, I will have a few words about digital of, of the Palace of Versailles because maybe some, uh, some of our visitors, some of our, our audience is not aware that we are working uh, a lot on digital for heritage and museums and collections. So it's obviously the case for the Palace of Versailles. So a few, um, a few figures about the Palace of Versailles. Most of our visitors now, they are preparing their visit in, uh, on, on the web, obviously, and more and more on the mobile and, and the app. So this is why we, we are really developing everything in mobile first now. Um, on the mobile application is really the, the device that is uh, increasing uh, faster now. And the same for social networks. So the, the faster social network for us is uh, obviously Instagram, as you can imagine. We see that people's visitors are really preparing on Instagram their, their tour of Versailles. And we have a, a huge production of video, I mean huge for a museum. So we are not a, a global media like, uh, like the New York Times or so, but we are producing almost one video per week. It can be, you will see one about uh, VR, but it can be videos about our exhibition, video about our premises, about the palace, the gardens. We have a certified pilot of drone inside the team. We have a few drones to, to shoot uh, the estate of Versailles. Um, luckily, we, the estate is a place quite uh, photogenic so, and videogenic. So um, this is it. Um, quickly, a, a few words uh, about the mobile application. So it's, it's our, really our main device, our main tool. Uh, both for preparing the visit and accompanying the visit. And if I present it here quickly, it's that not yet, but we might consider putting some VR inside the, inside the app at some points. Versailles has always been a place for innovation since the 18th century. It was a place where there were a lot of testing, uh, enabling new, new products. So there were some the first tests of electricity were in Versailles, for example. So on, we try to continue and to perpetuate this tradition of uh, innovation in Versailles. And uh, so we had a MOOC a few years ago, um, and, and this is why we had this first uh, VR experience that we work on uh, through 2017 on launch in uh, 18. So uh, I, I heard in the previous presentation about how VR can, um, can serve a, a specific purpose. And for us, in everything we do in Versailles, and especially in the communication and digital team, it's important to say, okay, when we have a new tool, and this is exactly the case for VR, uh, what can it bring more? Like we have video, we have website, we have mobile application, uh, we have a lot of things already. But if we are going on VR, why? This is this is a big question, I think, and um, and this is why I will explain. Our main goal is transmission, and I think VR is a good way to transmit and and, and make people learn more about the palace, the history, the courtesan life, the kings, and so on. So this is something really, really, really important to, to identify the, the key points of, of the VR, what can it bring more on uh, other webs, on other, uh, on the other tools. So this first project, uh, Vive Versailles, Experience Versailles, was made uh, thanks to the Orange Foundation. Um, it was a, uh, one of our historic partners, and we're working it with, him, with them uh, uh, on a lot of pro different projects. And so the basic idea was not to be like a photogrammetric, it was really to, to travel in history. So we recreate the palace. I mean, not all of the palace, but most of it. So basically, it was two different uh, experiences. So Vive Versailles, it was to... to to live, to experience two spe very specific days of the life of Versailles. One was the 1st of September, 1686, uh, when the Siam Embassy, so Siam is more or less Thailand today, uh, came to Versailles, so you can imagine the trip, and to visit uh, Louis XIV in a diplomatic uh, trip and visit 
because there was big uh, game of influence between the West Indies and, uh, and the Netherlands and France. So basically the Siam embassy came in, uh, in, in Versailles. So what you see here is um, the ambassador staircase that no more exists. It was destructed in the 19th century. Um, so obviously the ambassadors took the staircase embassy. So it was for only for the foreign visit. So it was really like, uh, you can imagine that there was a quite a, an important protocol in Versailles at the time, still is uh, at some point. <laughs> and, um, and, and so this was the first experience. Um, each of the two experiences uh, were like some four scenes. So for the Siam Embassy, the first one was in the courtyard of the palace. You could see the, um, the coaches arriving after you had the staircase embassy that you saw. And we had, after that, the Diana Saloon, and finally, the Hall of Mirror that most visitors, whether they are virtual or real, expect to see when we're speaking of, uh, of Versailles. And so we, we work with a, a digital agency, MMP, that, that was uh, working uh, for Orange and, and for the Palace of Versailles. And everything was computer graphic, and which is complicated when you are recreating something. It's, you need to be sure about everything you're, you're creating. You mean, like that's the difference with the photogrammetric or, or, or video 360 is now like, is for when you are creating, we have a lot of curators, scientific in Versailles, they are really picky about what we are seeing and historic, uh, historic point of view. And for example, we had some remarks about the eighth of the chandelier, about uh, the hat that the courtesan, about the color, of the coat of the king, and a lot of details like that. So, I mean, there's a lot of technical work, of graphic work and, and artistic work, as you can imagine, but there was also a lot of scientific work prior to creating all the, all the scenes. So this is something really important when you are in a, in a scientific context. And, uh, and obviously architecture too. And so, but wh wh why, why, why we did it, this, this first VR experience, um, Versailles is a place for everyone, and we, we think that our goal is to talk to everyone, but I think it's meaningless if you're speaking to, to, millennials, to millennials with guides or scientific books, so we need, we need to adapt, and it's our goal for us to adapt um, to our visitors. So... Um, this is why we, we decided to do this VR project. And we had the opportunity to test it for free for every uh, visitors of the Visitors to Versailles exhibition. So during uh, more than four, four weeks, all visitors can experience for free the experience. It was in English and French, and you will be able to experience it, I think, sorry. And uh, people like it. What we noted is that for most visitors, it was the first time they experienced VR. So I think one of the themes that we'll be speaking in the, in the couple of days coming, the maturity of the VR, I think. I, I don't know, it'd be interesting to have your point of view, Salah, on this. But we, um, it's always the first time for everyone. It was the same at the Kennedy Center that we just saw before. And so it, it, it needs a lot of teaching of staff, of people accompanying the, the experiencer. So this is something that we do take care, that we do need to, to address. And especially in a museum where people, they don't expect to have a VR experience on something so new. So this is one, one of the, the issues we have. And, but people loved it, obviously. It was free. And uh, it was something new, and it was the Siam Embassy. It was also a theme that was um, that the exhibition we had in Versailles at this time dealt with. So that was really uh, <coughs> interesting to have the digital on the artworks uh, two rooms away of, of the of the experience. So um, that was great. Just a word about Virtually Versailles. Virtually Versailles is a project that we are having in, Ver in, in Versailles that we are dealing with abroad. We had the first experience in Singapore last year, uh, last December, and it's a digital exhibition, so there's no artworks, only digital artworks and digital setup. 
including the VR experience. So we had this in Singapore, we would like to have it more in Asia, uh, in Middle East, maybe also the Americas. And this is something really important to show Versailles abroad, because one important thing with VR is the reach. Uh, I, I spoke about the difficulties of reaching everyone, because unfortunately not everyone has a VR set uh, at home, but more and more there are rooms, and having a virtually Versailles experience in a, in a mall, in, a, in the street, in a, in a shop, uh, abroad can make people have interest into Versailles, know more about Versailles, and finally wanting to come to Versailles, because VR is amazing, but nothing replaces a visit for, for real in, in Versailles. And the two, the two can combine, and this is why we are thinking of having a, a VR set and, uh, permanently in Versailles. So we are still figuring out the figures, uh, the cost, if we can have uh, like partners, technical partners or sponsors on, on this kind of uh, setup. But I think this is something we could, uh, we could have in Versailles and that would be interesting. Uh, one museum has, has a setup like this in, in France, uh, in Paris, actually. And so just to finish before uh, maybe a few questions, uh, what's next for Versailles? So um, this is this new major VR project that we will launch at the end uh, at the end of uh, the month. So in a few weeks, unfortunately, I cannot really speak about it, but it will be something totally different than the Vive Versailles experience. It will be more like uh, Versailles as it is of uh, today, and um, it will be uh, free on Steam, so Vive Versailles is also free on Steam in French and English, but the next project will be um, on Steam too, French, English, and Chinese. So with uh, exclusive uh, cultural content made by our curators, because we, we learned from the first experience and all the scientific uh, uh, issues that we, that we could have. So um, this is it, but just the previous slide, when we are thinking of a VR project, we really need to think about uh, accessibility and availability. Like, and I mean, VR project for us is also a mean to, to reach an audience that is not coming to Versailles for different reasons. In Versailles, we have programs for, for schools, obviously, for families, for people abroad. We also have programs for people um, detained in jails. We, are, we have a lot of things. I think we do think that Versailles is for everyone. It's, it, Palace of Versailles is not just for the happy few, like the, the 10 or 20,000 people coming uh, every day, but um, for everyone really so. And VR ca can, be, um, can be a mean to, to reach those people, and I think this is one of the points with VR, the accessibility, because it, 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 it renders something accessible for everyone everywhere, but you need, you need the appropriate set, so maybe this is something we, we will speak of uh, in the coming days. I was wondering, uh, you talked about accessibility. Um, so, so far you told me your main platform for distribution is Steam, which is mainly a platform that a lot of gamers do use. And I was wondering whether you were thinking also of trying to port your future content on more mainstream devices, such, a, such as Quest or even PlayStation VR, things which are maybe lighter or smaller, or you, you're gonna maybe focus on Steam as your main distribution so far? For us, when we're producing content in, uh, content of, in Versailles, whether it is VR product or, or video, we, we'll like, try to broadcast as much as we can. So for us, Steam was the easiest uh, platform to, to broadcast or on, on to put our VR products on, but uh, we would be happy to be on more, uh, on, on more platforms. Only thing, like when you have to manage like uh, several platforms, it's a bit more complicated. So, oh yeah, this is a, this is a video. Thank you. Oh, so the video is 360, so you can uh, have different, uh, yeah. So this is the Hall of Mirror. And those are the team embassy with this uh, curious hat. And this is the U ball. That really happens, it was a, a, a ball made in the honor of the wedding, and Louis XV is um, one, of the, one of the youths. So the, the story is quite funny, and at this, it's at this party that Louis XV, Louis XV sorry, uh, find his new uh, mistress. So the gods. Uh, so this is the staircase of the ambassador. Okay.
So continuing on the, on the distribution question, uh, you have created many assets for this project and for the new one. So now you start to have a collection of assets, of 3D yeah. assets that you can be using. Uh, besides home uh, use, which, uh, which is digital distribution, mm -hmm. there's of course location-based entertainment, which we're going to discuss next, uh, next day. Um, do you think that it could be something interesting to, to go beyond and give experiences which are much larger scale for people to, uh, mm -hmm. to become really uh, inhabitants of Versailles and being able to interact more like having Versailles as a huge uh, world scale world in, in <laughs> which you could you know, live and interact and being mm. uh, the people. Because I think that's also what people yeah. like is to, to feel a part of mm. this thing. You know? Yes, thank you, De definitely. I mean, we, we have those assets that, that we've made in the previous project on the next project. And yes, one of the next steps could be to use those assets in uh, gaming, for example, uh, in um, enhancing, so having some new rooms, some new experience, some new um, people, some new his historic uh, personage of, uh, of Versailles uh, taking place in those assets. I mean, this is also a question like, would like to enhance and to to add some new project to the existing project and it could be not a different project but having a bigger project of the for for those existing so definitely it could be like having more spaces um that you can discover with the vr but it can also be have in the same project like the for example the all of mirrors that you've seen having um Another experience, a lot of things took place in this. For example, uh, this year was a um, commemoration of the centenary of the signature of the Treaty of Versailles, Treaty of Versailles, that took place in the Hall of Mirror. So with the same part of the same work, we could have uh, this experience because there's a lot of things to, to tell about Versailles in the 19th and 20th century. Thank you. So we're running late, but I have one last question. Uh, I know you had like very interesting exhibitions, uh, like Jeff Koons or different exhibitions inside Versailles. What about one day having a VR exhibit uh, in Versailles? Would you be open to something like that? Or? Yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, I, th I think we, we could do something like that. It would not be something like replacing our um, traditional exhibition or uh, contemporary art exhibition that we have every year. But yes, Versailles would be open, and I think Versailles considers itself uh, being in modernity, and we at least we're working on that. So yes, that definitely could be something. Because there are amazing French talents doing VR. You have Celine right in front of you, Tricard. I would love to see the key, for instance, that is here inside Versailles, and I think that could be something really fun that you have inside out. <laughs> yes, be the thing, and I, I, I'd be happy to to discuss uh, this kind of thing uh, today. Uh, with a coffee. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Paul. So, we're going to thank you.